scared him. You scared him. All right, well, today's project. Uh, I want to work on the 57. So when I bought that thing, the uh, guy had a disc brake kit for it, but uh, he wanted like the retail price for it. And I just didn't pay tax, which wasn't for me. So I built that car, we did all the drum brakes and everything. And then a few months after, he's like, ah, I'll sell it. Well, at that point, I was kind of pissed off because I just put all brand new drums on that thing. Uh, so I ended up going out and buying them for a, for a bit of a deal. But now I got to finally put them on. And uh, the bonus is I'm thinking I'll be able to steal some parts and put on this junk so I can change the front end over to Chevy 5 lug. I'm hoping. But obviously the garage is full. I got to get this pile of junk out. So I'm thinking, so I can just kind of scoot it in right there. Uh, where all this uh, garbage is. Uh, then I can kind of pull it back in easily. So, step one, get all this kind of crap cleaned out. That way I can just kind of push it over. Danny actually took 57 to work today. So got a little bit of room to work with. Deal with the 55, get a little bit kind of cleaned up and hopefully get this thing in. Uh, I ordered a bunch of stuff through Amazon, uh, brake line and all that, but I think there might be a couple of fittings I need. So I wanted to get the thing up in the air, take a look at it tonight. If I gotta buy something tomorrow, I can. So you're coming up on the weekend. Old shop dog Steve-O here is uh, guarding the place, I guess. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's the plan for right now. Cleaning up garbage. All right, so the well, area is kind of cleaned out as good as it can be. I'm gonna move this little pop-up tent I have. I'm hoping I can just steer the thing right in and then kind of swing it over at the floor jack. It'll fit just right against the garage. But uh, maybe I'll just run a quick tape on it, make sure I have enough length so I was able to go beside it. But that way I can still have a fair bit of room and maybe even still park two cars. Let's be honest, that's pretty important. Uh, shortened up the winch line a little bit so it won't take off on me. Steve's in the backyard for safety, so yeah, get after it. Did you hook it up to the winch at least? Yeah, the winch is the safety if it all goes horribly wrong. Oh, you want it right into the side? Into the what? Into the side? Yeah, I'm gonna try and jam it up there, then slide the rear end over, but cut the mud. Ingenuity at its finest. Well, they don't have much room or a small item. I know how to work it. Well, you know how to work those big items too. <laughs> you know, like your wallet, it's real big. 
Double zing! Zing zing! You know, it doesn't even affect the driveway at all. No. Same with the rest of this junk. Where's all this going? I was thinking the bedroom. No. There's no room in there. Your fly's open. Hey, dude, I'm trying to get views. <laughs> 20 bucks, 20 bucks. <laughs> All right. All right. Check it out. We got her all shined up. Danny just fired up the old hot rod, so I think she's gonna bring her in for me. She's good like that. Hopefully she doesn't run over her uh, award-winning prize dog. Come on, Steve. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Gentle, gentle. It's been a while since she's parked in a garage. God, is this dog dumb? Perfect. Scared him. He scared him. He wasn't wearing his muffs. He wasn't wearing his muffs. Okay, baby. Just idling for eight seconds around the limiter. Hi. All right. Well, supper time. We'll come back. Go jack this thing up. Take a look at it. Well, so the car's in the garage. I brought all this junk out of the basement, which I actually had sitting outside for a while, as it turns out. So there's a few leaves. Test it out. But so this is the kit I ended up getting. So again, it's a right stuff kit. Uh, so it's just a power front disc. Now it's a nine inch booster. I know they made an eight inch as well, but when uh, the guy was building this car originally, it was gonna be a small block car. Not small block. Four door. So there's lots of room. Now I know what the LS is and stuff like that, especially with those side covers I have. I'm hoping this will still fit. They do sell a little piece that moves the uh, master over and up, but I'm hoping it'll be okay. I do have those slide mounts, and when I put the motor in the car, I did have it as far ahead as I could. So, fingers crossed I have enough room. But this comes with all the little, most of the lines uh, for the master itself, new adjuster and stuff like that, <clears throat> proportioning, or whatever it's called, metering block, I guess. So it's got all that, which is awesome. What I was waiting on was uh, all this stuff. So I uh, Amazon took forever, but this nickel copper uh, brake line, which I just love. I actually found a brake, uh, a line lock, some miscellaneous ones. It looks brand new. Hopefully it'll work. Uh, but the kit came with everything. So it's got new, uh, you know, dust shields. These are the uh, adapters. They're going to join the factory spindles to a modern style, you know, single piston GM sliding type unit and brand new discs and then uh, with the races already in them i guess and then uh seals dust caps bearings and a couple of front brake lines so it should be real simple <laughs> probably shouldn't have said that I jinxed it the only thing is on this thing because it's a single pot the line goes out of the master into i think the driver front then the pastor front and it just tees off into the back it's all three uh, three sixteenths line and when I'm going to do this, I want to run quarter uh, back. So there was a fitting I'm going to need that goes kind of from like a quarter to three sixteenths, whatever those uh, fitting and thread pitch and all that is. I ordered a couple. It might be in my miscellaneous bin. But I'm also thinking, I don't know what I did when I plumbed the rear brakes on this. So maybe I used it. So that was what I wanted to do today. Was I got all the stuff out because I was in the basement. The stairs are a pain when it's uh, heavy. So I'm going to lift this thing up, get out of there, see what I need. Because uh, if I need any parts, I'm kind of limited till tomorrow to get it. And I'm hoping I can bang this out in the weekend. I did discs on the 55 and it went slick. There was no issues whatsoever, but I didn't run power. I just ran uh, manual brakes. 
So I guess worst case, I could just put the the master in with no power if I had to for the time being. But yeah, I'll make it fit somehow, some way. But yeah, I'll get this thing jacked up. We'll get under it. All right, well, I got her up on stands. Uh, the problem is I ran regular 316 brake line in the back and I didn't use that fitting. I looked in my storage bin. I can't quite find it just yet. So I'm going to go check inside, but I don't want to start taking this thing apart. If I don't have this little fitting because I won't be able to connect uh, the line to the rear brakes and I don't want to be stuck in that situation. So Amazon has the fitting. That's where I got last time, but right now it's like a week away. So I'm hoping a local parts store will have it tomorrow. We'll go from there. So I'm going to call it here tonight. I don't want to get started on anything because uh, I just have to redo it because I don't want this thing out of commission for too long. So I'll be back at tomorrow, hopefully with the fitting, and then I'll knock this thing out in a couple of days, I'm hoping. All right, next day after work. So I actually couldn't get the fitting I wanted, which is a bummer, but as it turns out, uh, I just got another complete rear brake line. So my issue was the rear brake line on a Tri-5 uh the female end to the, to the hydraulic line is like a 316 style uh brake line and then obviously it goes to 316 to the drums but uh with this new kit and all i'll probably run quarter inch back so this one will basically i'll just change this it'll be quarter inch to 316 and this was actually uh the same price as a stupid brass fitting 15 dollars. so whatever i'll keep the other one toss it in the toolbox I also got this in the mail today. It's like, I ordered it. It's for all DeWalt stuff, but it's like, I don't even know, some Chinese no-name brand uh, dual charger with these uh, batteries. So I don't know if I've ever used them. I've never used them before. If you guys have, let me know what you think of them or I should expect because I've been having these DeWalt ones forever, but uh, it's never enough. You can never have enough batteries, it turns out. So anyways, I'm going to pull the wheels, uh, get this stuff kind of organized, maybe on a shelf or do something, start pulling the master cylinder off and uh the whole front end apart because that's gonna have to change and start fitting this together the other kit what i did was really easy uh the only thing was on the other kit i had which is a no-name one this is like a brand name on 55 but the brackets had the uh, calipers on the front which is a little weird so i had to weld on tabs and what else did it have that was weird forget but oh i had to drill spindles for the cotter pin, which was also a nightmare, drilling that hardened spindle. So I'm hoping this kit's a little more thought out, but eh, I guess we'll see. So I'll get this tore apart and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I jumped ahead just a little bit. So the instructions are terrible. They're actually meant for a non-power brake setup, but this was my biggest problem I thought I was gonna run into, was would the master and all that fit? So I had to take off this cover, which is no big deal. And all I otherwise had to do was uh, get this light in a good spot. I had to remove this one, uh, this one coil. It wanted to be right in the fat part of the cylinder or the, uh, the booster. So I'll just kind of move it back and put a self tapper in it and it should be uh, no big deal. And then once that's all together, I'll have to do some trimming uh, on here, probably just kind of like a, a section like that. Obviously it's meant to go in, I guess, for, for a booster or whatever, but I'll probably have to take this section out and it'll just kind of flap in the breeze there. But that was the, the main concern. So I'm stoked on that. It looks like it'll be just fine. It came with a bunch of adapters to get to the factory pedal, which I have in there. So yeah, that's good. Uh, it's a bit of a pain to get this on. You got to like eighth of a turn on a wrench the whole way on. So I'm going to get that on there. I can always take the master off the booster to, to bench bleed it or just do it right here and have Danny step on the pedal. But... Uh, yeah, that's a big sigh of relief. So I'm going to get this kind of cinched down. I'll start pulling the wheels off and we'll get into the actual uh, brakes themselves. Well, uh, it was important. I wanted just to make sure that uh, everything fit together. So I had to trim up this back panel a little bit. Uh, the coil, I ended up just because there's a top and bottom mounting hole. So I ended up using the bottom hole of the coil and mounted it on the top. So simply moved it up one coil length. Uh, it did put a little bit of strain on the wire. It's definitely at the end of its uh, pull, so I could always make another one or whatever I have to do, uh, if I remember. But I put it all back together, everything fits. Uh, trimmed around the ba the master, so it's kind of tight, but looks okay. I'll take it off and kind of clean it up with some sandpaper because there's some jagged cuts. But that was a big concern. So that's uh, that worked out slick. 
Uh, I got to run a vacuum line to the back of the intake. This one actually had a, uh, it was plugged. And I have another manifold that has a proper uh, nipple on it. So I should be able to pull that out, put the new one in. Go from there. So that's, uh, that's a big sigh of relief right there. That was what I was really worried about. So I'll uh, yoink these wheels off and I'll start uh, taking all the hard line and all that stuff off. Okay, so there we are, down to the uh, the bare spindle. Pretty simple stuff. I know a lot of people are kind of scared of drum brakes. Worst taste, uh, take a picture, Google it, do whatever you gotta do. I'll clean up the spindle and all that. Uh, all I did was I basically just took the uh, shoe off, uh, the drum. These are actually off of a more modern vehicle because Tri-5s had uh, roller bearings. I think no ball bearing whatever it is and these are tapered bearings so th this is actually a nice setup to have with the uh the hub and all that so it works out pretty good and then these shoes were brand new you can see that drum is still brand new and i think you know that's where it looks like i put new wheel cylinders in too so this is actually a brand new setup i'm hoping i'm gonna be able to make this all fit on the t because it's a chevy truck axle which will then switch it over to five lug car pattern this is all brand new stuff so that's plan with this as i recall in the other kit i'll probably read the instructions but i mean pretty simple pack the uh pack the brings the grease slap those on uh, like you would uh, anything else there is a caliper setup to put a it's just you know gm slide style caliper i believe i use this and something like that just kind of hold it very simple setup and then just a uh, the caliper went on its little thing and then it had a hydraulic line that went to there. So shouldn't be too big of a deal. I'm going to get that kind of all set up maybe on this side. We'll go fast motion on the other side and then I'm actually going to take a little bit of a break. I want to put this on the computer and see how long it's going to be. I don't want this to be a crazy long video so maybe I'll do it in two parts if I have to. But yeah, that's how it's turning out. All right, so here's the disc brake kind of caliper and uh, the dust shield. Uh, I gotta say, I'm actually pretty unimpressed with this kit so far. Now I bought it used, but it was brand new. I mean, the guy who I got it from. Uh, so the way it works, you replace the, uh, this upper bolt. This is where like all the springs would have attached. So that's all fine and good. Now the kit came with these two washers. So on later model cars, you have to use this as a spacer. And then it's supposed to come with two of these because uh, as you put the uh, bracket for the caliper, uh, it's the thickness right there. Uh, so that space is actually the steering arm away from the bottom of the spindle. Well, the front now doesn't have anything, so it comes with a spacer. Now the problem is this kit, and it was a brand new bag I just opened up, it has three of these ones, which are meant to go on there, and only one of these, this is the mounting hardware that fits like that. So, uh, you can see right there, I ended up just stacking washers together that worked out to be the same thickness. But again, I mean, it's just kind of sloppy work so far. This thing is a little meh, but whatever. So that's on. Uh, I guess I'm happy with it. The instructions are terrible. The instructions don't even mention the dust plate, so I actually put it all together and then realized uh, I got to put that on too. Uh, so that's that. Uh, I think the next thing I'm going to do, I guess, will be install the bearings and seals in the rotors, which are over there, and those are the bearings and stuff I got. So I should be able to slap that on, and I should be able to bolt the caliper on and kind of show you how that works. I think I'll do the other side just in uh, fast motion. But, uh, yeah, so that's that. All right, so these are the rotors that came with the kit. They already have the inner races pushed in, so that works out pretty good comes with this kit or bag of miscellaneous so it's gonna have inner and outer bearings a couple of dust seals and this will be your uh, cap so pretty simple uh, I guess it should all be different there's gonna be one that's gonna fit the back and one that's gonna fit the front 
and that one goes there. So, big and small, big one goes in the back, small one is for the front. Now these don't have any grease in them, so I'll have to get some. Uh, so I'm sure you guys have seen it, but you just kind of pound a bunch of grease in there, slap that in there. This dust seal is going to go like that and just kind of knock it in with a block of wood or something, but we'll get to uh, packing some grease. that in there. Now they actually have a seal driving tool, but uh, I always find a hammer works. You just want to make sure when you're going in you're kind of working it back and forth. You don't want to force one side in the other, it'll just kink. Perfect. So that's that. And same thing, there's already a race in this side. So plunk in your little bearing. And it's ready to go on. Is what's gonna happen. Oh, this is a weird way of making this. So what's going to happen, the spindle is going to fit through there, there's going to be a little keyway, that's going to fit on, you're going to have a little castle nut, oh you know what they did on this kit, the other one I think I reused the uh, the nut, and it was way longer, so this one's quite a bit shallower, so it should work with the standard one, put that in there, tighten it up, you're going to spin it, once that's all done, cotter pin it, cap on, you're done, so we'll get back to the car and put this back together. Alright, so we're back in the car, as you can see, I took this off. Uh, this is actually probably the second or third time I had it back together and filmed. It'll show up and up. There's big scratches in here. This is all bent or I don't know what the heck it is. When I had it on there, the uh, the rotor was rubbing against in there and it was kind of causing it to wobble around and stuff like that. So I tried smacking it. Eh, I wasn't happy and honestly, <clears throat> I don't really care. So I got the bearing in there, the washer. This is the nut that's going to hold it. Now, what's nice about this, on the other kit, like I said, I had to drill out the spindle, which is a real pain. Because uh, that's a factory nut. So you can see how shallow, like, well, whatever the castle part of it is, and how deep it is on this one. So that'll allow you to capture the hole much easier. It came with some giant cotter pins, so I may have to put a smaller one in. But ultimately, to get this kind of started... Put a little preload on it while you're spinning it to make sure everything is seated. Make sure it's perfect. Loosen it off. Just go kind of finger tight. And back it off to the closest one. Uh, yeah. I think I'm going to need a smaller cotter pin. But that's kind of the gist of it. Nice and spinny, easy, easy. So I'll uh, change the cotter pin, knock the boot on. I'll probably blast this off some brake clean. I should be able to slap on the calipers. I gotta say, I'm I'm pretty disappointed with this kit. Like I think I paid 300 bucks for it used. The guy had a bill for a thousand dollars for this thing, and the instructions are terrible. Uh, if you don't kind of know what you're doing a little bit here, uh, yeah, this will be a bit of a gong show for sure. So. I'll bolt her up, we'll bring her back. Okay, so I got the calipers. Now they come preloaded with pads all ready to go. Get this cardboard out. Now, there's a bleeder, and there's your little uh, inlet for the line. Now these uh, pins, they're threaded, so they'll fit into your 
new bracket or my new bracket and that's about it so I'm gonna go ahead and slip these suckers on now ultimately bleeder up if you don't do that you will have problems I'm not too proud to admit I have done that and then my old man comes by and makes fun of me it's a whole big thing Two. Now I'll key these suckers down, and I'm gonna call these assembled. Let me able to show you actually. Get the stupid light. So that's how she's gonna work, top and bottom. So ultimately, you're gonna end up kind of attaching the caliper right to this bracket, and then it slides on those pins. Easy peasy. That's standard GM brakes for a bazillion years. So that's done. All right, now this side is 100% uh, done, other than this pile of junk. Uh, we're going to work on the other side. So, I kind of gave the uh, explanation on the other side. I figured I'd do a little fast motion, make this happen real quick, and on and off, and call it. Well, there you go. So it's got the discs are on, the master and the booster are all in, ready to go. A little bit of screwing around with the plug wires. So that was all kind of taken care of. So now all that's really left is uh, plumbing. So got my hydraulic lines for the front, got my miscellaneous stuff I gotta make some lines for. I'm gonna install that line lock. Uh, what else do I gotta do? Bleed the system, stuff like that. Oh, and screw around with the rod and everything. But I think because I started off cleaning the the T and the garage moon all out around getting this thing in here and now this, I'm gonna have enough footage, I'll probably just do it in two parts. So this will be part one, all the hardware stuff, part two will be plumbing it, uh, line lock, and maybe we'll drive it a little bit. Maybe Danny can do some burnouts, huh? What do you think? But uh, so that's where we're gonna leave it today. Thanks so much for watching, tell your friends, appreciate it, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and uh, yeah, part two is coming at you right away.